India is a mother culture that actually mothers, that holds its children tight and very reluctantly lets go. We heard tears being shed behind us at the Delhi airport and not just by our parents. Our choice to step away made us neither fully Indian nor fully American. So I was nine years of age and our father had been posted to a town in central India called Jabalpur and he was absolutely brilliant. As a diagnostician, as a physician, he was very compassionate and people started to come from all over India. So as we were leaving Jabalpur, the train was at the cantonment and there must have been a thousand people on the platform to wish Dr. Chopra, our father, farewell and many and many of them were crying. I think if I can think of one theme that runs across the women in our family, the one theme comes to mind is nurturing. They're nurturers, essentially the archetype mother feminine energy. I'm seeing that now with our granddaughters. I have two, eight and six and when I had my hip surgery, they came a couple of times to visit from New York and the six-year-old granddaughter when she's leaving comes up and says Nana which means maternal grandfather I love you and she says very soon you'll go from two crutches to one crutch and then one cane and then to 14 golf clubs. And I'm very happy I wrote this book now because I realized that um, it made me relook at the preciousness of a family bond, at brotherhood, at our family, at the context uh, that we grew up in, and what shaped us, what shaped our dharma and destiny. Brotherhood is a very important aspect of our lives. We, you know, we played together, we studied together, and now we are sharing the healing profession together. So I'm there in the compound in the front yard, and there's a five foot pole. I put a tin of cherry blossom shoe polish and now I'm shooting it. And Deepak comes and he stands next to it. And I said, Deepak, what are you doing? He says, listen, the story of William Tell and the apple and his son, you never miss, so go ahead and shoot. And so I shot and I missed the cherry blossom shoe can and instead hit Deepak in the chin. So he turns to me and he says, now listen, we're gonna go home and tell mom that I tripped and a piece of barbed wire nicked me. So I said, Deepak, this is a lie. And he said, now listen, I'm Ram, I'm Rama, and you are Lakshman. And Lakshman always listened to Rama. But I'm responsible for that handsome dimple in his chin. <laughs>